Hi, this is Kavita Suresh Kumar and in this video I am going to demonstrate how to create and delete Google Kubernetes Engine clusters in Google Cloud Platform using the Google Cloud Platform console. I have logged into my Google Cloud account and I am in the demo project. So now we are going to create a Kubernetes Engine. So click Kubernetes Engine. So first we need to enable the Kubernetes Engine API. Click Enable. Click Create. Either you'll be able to click Create here or you can click Create here. Click Create. So by default, it takes to your page where it allows you to create an autopilot cluster, which means it is going to take care of the number of nodes and networking and all these things. But here in this video, I wanted to show how to create a standard cluster. So I'm going to switch to the standard cluster. Switch to standard cluster. Okay, so first we need to provide the name for the cluster. So I'm going to call it as a demo cluster. You can see here it is showing the cost as $146.38 and which is going to be about $0.20 per hour. So first we need to select whether we wanted to create this cluster in the zonal level or in the regional level. So since it is for the demo purpose, I am just going to create in the zonal level. And you can specify the default node locations. If you click this, you have an option to specify and you can specify that. And the control plane version, you can either say as like, okay, I want a static version and I will manually upgrade or you can use a release channel, which means automatically the GKE will update the control plane version. Okay, so now let's go and select the default pool. So we will use the default node pool, but just, just for the demo purpose, so I'm going to reduce the size to two. I'm not going to enable auto scaler right so this is the two node pool upgrade strategy available one is a surge upgrade so which is going to upgrade at any point what do you have specifying as the max surge and the other one is a blue green upgrade which means like if you are having three nodes when you wanted to do a blue green upgrade it will create another three nodes separate node pool which is equivalent to the current node so we'll go with the surge upgrade and then click nodes so here you have an option to specify the machine configuration here uh, so you have the four options general purpose compute optimized memory optimized and the gpus so general purpose is primarily for the common workloads so it provides the cost and flexibility and the compute optimized this is primarily for the com performance intensive workloads and the memory optimized it's for the memory intensive workloads like the in-memory databases and the GPUs are primarily for the machine learning and the data processing. So for the demo purpose, we will go with the general purpose. Again, here you will have a series of the machine types. So I'll go with E2 only and the machine type here, I'm going to select the E2 micro and the boot disk type. So we can select a uh, standard persistent disk, SSD persistent disk or the balanced persistent disk. I'll go with the balanced persistent disk, which is the default and the boot disk encryption. If you have an encryption key, you can provide that or you can go with the Google manage encryption key. Or if you want to enable the nodes on spot VMs, you can do that. Go to the networking. So here you can specify the option, how many maximum pods you want per node and any network tags, right? So all these things you'll be able to provide Then the security. So here, obviously we need a service account. So we'll use the compute engine default service account. If you wanted to use a different service account, you can create and then you can assign here and the access scope. So we'll use the allow default access scope. So if you wanted to allow full access, you can specify this, or if you want to allow a set access for the specific APIs, you can do that as well. Then the metadata. So here you'll be able to add the any Kubernetes label or any GC instance metadata that you can add. So I'm going to leave everything as default. Uh, so all these configurations are specific to the node pools. Now let us see the configuration specific to the cluster. Click automation. So here you'll be able to do the configuration like you can enable the notifications and if you wanted to do uh, 
enable vertical pot scaling you can do that or if you wanted to enable uh, node auto provisioning so that also you will be able to do that and then the networking so here you can uh, create a new network or here in this demo purpose I'm going to use the default network but if you wanted to create a new VPC network to use for this cluster you can do that also you can specify whether this is going to be a public cluster or a private cluster so all these things are possible and also the DNS provider you can say whether it is a cube DNS or a cloud DNS uh, from the security perspective you have multiple options you can encrypt secrets at the application layer you'll be able to enable workload identity you can enable the Google groups for our back I'm going to leave everything as default then the metadata so if you want to do add any specific metadata in the cluster level you can do that the features so you, if you wanted to enable logging you can do that if you wanted to enable the service mesh if you want to enable so that you'll be able to do it here so here also i'm not going to change anything i'm going to leave everything as default then click create the cluster is getting created now the cluster demo cluster has been successfully created let's review that so we could see here the details of the cluster right so it is the control plane is in the us central 1c and the default node zones also we have set as us central 1c and these are the external endpoints right and this is in the default network subnet also is default okay so you can click nodes and see the nodes information is it's part of the default pool and we have two nodes as part of this cluster and the storage so we have the premium standard and the standard are over storage the absorbability so here you will be able to come and see the the CPU request and the memory request and the percentage it is getting used all these information you will be able to see here the logs so here you will be able to see the cluster logs okay so here you can see the cluster logs so you will be able to select the severity what type of logs you wanted to see okay and you can view the logs in the log explorer also by clicking in this here so it will take you to the log explorer and then you will be able to see the logs here So now we have explored the cluster details. Now let's go and deploy a container. Click deploy. So we'll use an existing container image. So we'll use this default Nginx latest itself. Then click continue. So the deployment name also will leave as a default. Right. So you can view the YAML file, how the deployment YAML will looks like here you can see it is of kind deployment and the api version is apps v1 and the metadata so here we are giving the name as nginx hyphen one and the namespace is default and the labels this is how we are going to identify this particular deployment and the spec we are going to have a replicas as three and the selector match labels again it's nginx hyphen one and then we are going to have a template so template again it will have a metadata labels as this and the spec it is going to be containers and the name is nginx and the image is nginx latest okay so here we have the definition for the horizontal pot scaler also so here you can see the pods will be automatically scaled when the average utilization goes beyond 80 percentage So here you have an option to deploy this particular container in an existing cluster. So we just now created a cluster, we'll deploy in that. But still here you have an option to create a new cluster as well. Click continue, right? So we wanted to expose this deployment as a new service so that we'll be able to access the Nginx pod. So check the checkbox, right? So we will leave everything as default. And the service type is load balancer. So because we wanted to access it outside so we are going to select the option as load balancer 
and then click deploy so it's creating a deployment so it's waiting for the service to be ready so now you could see the nginx pod has been successfully deployed right you can see it is deployed to a demo cluster and these are the labels being used right and these are the three pods which are running as part of this deployment because we have specified the replicas as three right so now we will be able to access this by clicking this link so now we could see the nginx web server is successfully running as a container in the kubernetes cluster okay now let us go and delete this kubernetes cluster select the checkbox and then click delete so we need to give the name of the cluster here which is going to be demo cluster and then click delete so the demo cluster has been successfully deleted in this demo we have seen how to create a gke cluster and then deploy a container to the cluster and then how to delete the gke cluster if you like this video please like share and subscribe thanks for watching the demo